Following up on the 5008 MPV, the Peugeot 508 is now available as a sedan and wagon. The 500 series has a long history and a legacy of spacious sedans and family cars. First up was the 504 in 1968, which was immediately acclaimed for its combination of timeless elegance and advanced technology. Today, the 508 sets standards in safety and other areas, while its design embodies the car maker's new direction. The 508 is the new luxury segment model for Peugeot, explains Peugeot's Thomas Schalberger. It replaces both the 607 and the 407. In the future, the model and its design will also be the car maker's image bearer. Feline features, with side mirrors matching the body color. The new logo is located on the lower end of the long hood. Directly underneath is the uninterrupted radiator. A chrome frame gives the radiator grille a standalone look. The side profile is defined by a longer wheelbase and short overhangs. The contours run harmoniously to the rear without any unnecessary edges in the way. Buyers can choose between gasoline and diesel engines, with outputs ranging between 82 and 150 kilowatts. All six have a standard fitted braking energy recovery system. The range also includes a model with automatic start-stop technology. That is the 508 EHDI, and unlike in most other cases, its start-stop system also works in sub-zero temperature, says Schalberger. Plus, it has an extremely low consumption. It emits just 115 grams of CO2 and has an alternator rather than a conventional starter. This means there's no jolt when the engine goes on and off, which makes things more comfortable. And it's the 1.6-liter EHDI that we took a closer look at. Peugeot says it consumes 13% less fuel in city traffic than the equivalent regular engine, thanks to the start-stop system. It makes the dash to 100 kilometers an hour in 12.3 seconds, and the official consumption is just 4.5 liters for 100 kilometers. The 508 appeals to a variety of potential buyers, says Peugeot's Thomas Schalberger. There are those who are away on business a lot and cover maybe 30,000 kilometers a year and drive a two-liter diesel. Private customers tend to be families who don't want an MPV and are happy with five seats but do want a bit of power. This means a father aged around 45 or 50 and bigger kids. With smaller children, people prefer an MPV or the like for the toys and baby buggies. So we have frequent driver fleet customers with a diesel and private drivers with a gasoline version and less mileage. But whether it serves as a company or family car, the 508 offers a comfortable and welcoming ride. The controls have a classic layout. The materials have both matte and glossy surfaces. The radio and sat-nav are operated via a rotary knob. The 508 boasts classic wagon dimensions when it comes to the trunk. The rear seat bench can be folded away to open up a maximum cargo capacity of 1,598 liters. This is the first car from Peugeot that was also built in China. Peugeot expects China to account for one-third of total production and sales. All cars sold in Europe come from France, while everything sold in China and Southeast Asia will come from the plant in China. Alles, was in China, Südostasien verkauft wird, kommt aus dem Werk in China. Environmentally friendly drivers will have to wait just a little longer for the hybrid version. It's due out in 2012. The inaugural North European e-rally in Denmark recently pitted electric cars against each other. Some 40 teams were involved, 
not only looking for victory, but also, and perhaps primarily, to demonstrate the dependability and practical credentials of their vehicles. The field includes a number of Tesla Roadsters, probably the best known electric car worldwide. It boasts spectacular stats, accelerating from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.7 seconds, and it has a range of 350 kilometers. But in practical terms, more relevant for the future are these models. The Mitsubishi i-MEF is among the first mass-produced electric cars. It shares a platform with the Peugeot Ion and the Citroën C0. The small car has a range of 150 kilometers. Charging from a regular power point takes six hours. But it isn't just the big brands gearing up at the rally. Electric cars from small-scale manufacturers and private innovators are also competing. And they all face identical conditions as they set off to prove their endurance. The participants include experts and professors, as well as electric car pioneers and inventors. Rally driver Eckhard Erben has been driving electric since 2000. For Christmas, he bought himself a trike from Switzerland. It had a battery life of 3.3 kilowatt hours, top speed 85 kilometers per hour, and two seats. It even had two pedal power units on board, which took you up to 60 kilometers per hour. Before the cars are given a green light to start, there are the formalities, just like in a regular rally. After the paperwork comes the technical inspection part. Then there's a lecture for those traveling alongside the drivers. They need to pay attention to instructions about the checkpoint signs and special challenges if they're to have a chance of winning the 220 kilometer event. The outcome is decided not by the fastest time, but by the team with best performance on the special stages. Consistent driving is one big factor, a challenge for the driver's skills and the precise maneuvering of the vehicles. But the need for speed is still there, of course. The morning of the second day involved a slalom course that really pushed participants. But it's about having fun, as well as a good performance. This driver says seeing so many cars and participants is new for him, and it's well organized. The course was very pretty, according to this competitor. That, together with the weather and the good atmosphere, has made it memorable. The best bit was seeing other competitors coming the other way and getting lost, says this man. Sponsoring is provided primarily by energy suppliers. The Business Development and Technology Transfer Corporation of Schleswig-Holstein, from just over the border in Germany, also sent a team to compete. A run out in the Tazari Zero was an entirely new experience for these guys. Very interesting feeling, similar to being in a tram, explains Dr. Van Bursche. You feel the car pulling away. The engine sounds completely different. It was really great. After two days on the road, all except one of the vehicles completed the rally. Participants and spectators alike will treasure the memory of 40 cars of the future in an eclectic and electric mix of sizes and classes. The winners in the Tesla Roadster took home some extra pride, even though just taking part really was the most important thing. Mercedes is gearing up for the launch of its B-Class F-Cell car in the summer by sending three of them on a test drive around the world. The tour covers 30,000 kilometers, four continents, and 14 countries. The model has a range of around 400 kilometers. The fuel cells are recharged by escort vehicles in three minutes. The Grand Tour will end in Stuttgart in time for the launch. McLaren's MP412C has gone into production at a new factory in England. The sports car will be competing directly with the Porsche 911 GT3 and Aston Martin DB9. 
Its twin turbocharged 3.8 liter V8 engine generates some 441 kilowatts of power. McLaren plans to make around 4,000 units a year. Prices in Europe for the MP312C start at 200,000 euros. As oil price wars raged in the 1970s, German auto bonds were occasionally closed down on Sundays. Amazingly, at that time, Volkswagen launched a new model. It had the potential to go terribly wrong. But instead, it went on to be the star of a whole new generation of cars. The sleek design of this car was its selling point, and soon it became a legitimate replacement for the VW Beetle. Its name was the Golf. The first model was released in 1974 and was a revelation. It had front wheel drive and had a water cooled four cylinder engine. For 30 years, VW had used air cooling systems to make sure their engines didn't freeze up. The new system did have its problems at the start, but it soon became known for its reliability. The original Golfs are not so easy to keep running these days. In fact, this one's owner, Helmut Horn, says it can be really hard work. Many replacement parts are not made anymore by VW, and that leads to high prices, like for chrome bumper bars. There are almost no original front hoods either, and there are a lot of other small components that now need to be replaced by non-VW original parts, says Horn. The first Golf had 70 horsepower, giving it much better performance than other VW models, and it had a strong suspension too. The car went from 0 to 113 seconds and had a top speed of 160 kilometers an hour, and all for less than 10,000 Deutschmarks. Our 50 horsepower version isn't quite so fast, but it still performs well. Why must you waste your life away? This car was made in September 1974. Audi technology is clearly in use under the hood here. I've got to show the world, the world's got to see, see all the love, love that's in me. I said, why? The original Golfs managed to set new standards for the compact car market and often left the competition for dust. The car had good handling, and as soon as the legendary GTI came out in 1976, VW was also able to celebrate success on the racetrack too. The GTI car soon developed a considerable cult following. The Golf was one of the symbols of the 70s in West Germany. Now, 37 years later, the original Golfs don't seem really old-fashioned, just a bit minimalist. These days, car owners are just a little more spoiled, perhaps. Back then, the dials were pretty simple, and the interior wasn't so flash. The first Golfs didn't really look at all that robust either. All of my life is all I'll give you here. VW seats in those days were rarely particularly good, although the marquee had introduced built-in headrests in the 60s. Four doors were optional, but even with the two-door variant, there still was plenty of space. The rear seats have loop handles, a hand-me-down from the Beetle. The variable trunk wasn't invented by the Golf designers, but it was in this car that the trend became the standard. The car was what modern auto testers would probably call practical. Despite the Golf's tendency to rust, 
and the raft of added charges for extra options, the model sold particularly well. It was the in-car of a generation. After just 31 months, one million Golfs had been sold. The new Beetle had arrived. Another boost to sales came from the introduction of the diesel Golf, a first for its class. The GTI also soon became Colt, and the convertible sold well to younger drivers. Upon the latter's introduction in 1979, Beetle fans voiced their protest. But it didn't help. The future belonged to the Golf. Since then, the model has changed many times, but the success has always been there. In total, 28 million units have now been sold worldwide.